What are the key basics that all golfers should do? Today, we're gonna to find out. Hi, we're Piers and Andy from me and my golf. Now, if you haven't subscribed already and you're interested in getting your game better this year, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you can see our weekly videos. Now, we've been coaching a long time and there are three things that if you do these three things, they're definitely gonna have a big impact on your game. So, Andy. Let's get on with it. What's the first one? First one, okay, posture and balance. I think this is the this is the important thing with this. Whenever somebody comes to us for a lesson, these are things that we just consistently have to work on and correct, and they make a tremendous difference. Now, when it comes to posture and balance, it is going to make a huge difference, not only to power, but consistency of contact, which we know if you can find the middle more often, you're gonna play some better golf and you're gonna have, have some lower scores. So this is what we're looking at. If I take my posture here, and let's talk about why it's so important. I'm gonna get myself in a good posture. Now, if we put a box around me, Pierce, this is something we often do when we're coaching. Now, ideally, if I make a swing, what I would like to do is keep my relationship with that box all the way back and down through to impact. Through impact here a little bit, but then I'm gonna lose it as I come through. So if I can position myself in a great way where I'm balanced and I'm in a good posture, that relationship doesn't really change with that box. And we know it's important then for consistency of contact. If I put myself in a poor posture, I'll exaggerate this, where there's maybe too many angles, then what we often see then, as we swing back, my relationship now will change with that box and move a lot. And this is gonna make a, a huge difference on where this club is, how you move, how you use the body. And it's very inconsistent from there because there's so many different moving parts. So getting ourselves in this balanced posture is just key for consistency. Look, if you're hitting it all over the place, this is something you need to be looking at for sure. Okay, so let's talk about where we wanna be then. These are the key things that you can really check and take a look at. So if I take my posture, what we really wanna make sure we do, first of all, have a good hip hinge. So hinging forward from the hips, not too much. Now here's the checkpoint for you. If I'm in my setup here, a good indication that you've hip hinged a good amount is that if I draw a line vertically, but down the back of the triceps, it should pass just in front of the knees and into the feet. If I'm too bent over and too far away, we're gonna see that pass two foot too much in front of the, of the knees there. And then from here, as we know, that posture's compromised. You're gonna see a lot of moving parts. So that will take care of that. Down the, the line down the back of the tricep, you'll notice. Then the, the next thing is really, where is the weight on the feet? And this is something that we get wrong so often. We get people very much feeling on the balls of their feet. Now the balls of the feet is too far forward. We often feel that the toes are gripping the ground, or we see some people with too much flex in the legs and the weight's back in the heels. So we only want a slight softening of the legs and that enables the weight to go straight through the arches. So I've got 50% from front to back evenly spread. I'm not favoring the, the front or the back. This is really key because this then helps me use the ground and be fully um, engaged with the lower body. Whereas if I've got it too forward or too back again, I'm gonna see a lot of movement forward or back because there's gonna to be too much change. You're just fighting a battle to actually just keep in balance, aren't you? More exactly. so than thinking about applying good power. So let's hit a shot. I'm just gonna get myself in a good posture. You'll notice again, spine angle, arms and legs, and we'll see how much I can stay within that box. That's the key thing. Can I keep a good posture? But I've got half a chance if I'm in a good posture Don't from the start. Don't get holding this shot, Andy, because we're gonna do our hole in one challenge soon for you on this hole. Check out that one. <laughs> Could be a hole in one. Come on, decent. get it win. We've got to watch it. We've got to. No, no it's, it's a bit right. right. It's, it's a little right. right. It's right and big as well. Twelve feet. So before we get into the second tip, if you are enjoying the video, make sure you hit that like button, and also we'd like you to leave a comment down below. Now this is all about you and getting your golf better. So how can we help? How can we help your game? Please comment down below so we can get something for the next piece of content. So Andy. You've got something on your head there. You've got an OpKicks camera. We've got camera. the OpKicks camera. You've got something on your glove. We're talking about the grip, yeah? We, we can't talk about basics and not talk about the grip. This is just so important. It's the only thing that's in contact with the golf club, and it has such an impact on the control of the club face in terms of controlling the direction, but also power. How we position the hands on the golf club really influences and allows us to create a lever, which is so important for actually creating some speed in the golf swing as well. So look, this is what we call a should do. There are golfers with different types of grip out there, but look, for the majority of golfers that we see, if, they're, if they position their hand in this way, it's gonna help them with the golf. So let's go through where we don't wanna see it, where, where is a common one, first of all. So if I take my grip up here, one of the common things that we see is we see the grip 
placed right in the palm. So you can see here, I've already got the lines on, we're gonna show you that at the moment, but people hold it too much in the palm and then close their hand around the club. The problem is from there, is looking at my hand now, I cannot see two knuckles on the back of this left hand. I can't see two knuckles. And what this does now is limits my ability to be able to create a set in the wrist. I can't really hinge the wrists here, which is no good either. So what we actually want to do is position the club through more, more of this line. You'll see the line here, I've got it through the base of the little finger diagonally across to the base of the, four, of the forefinger. Now if I just place my club straight through that line there, club is up in the air nice and square, all I'm gonna do is close my hand on the club like that. Now I have a really good grip. Now from here I can see now at least two of these knuckles. My thumb is slightly over to the right and now when I take my setup, I now can swing back and create this lever. You can see now I'm setting the, the wrists on the backswing, which we know is gonna be massive for power. Yeah. It's, it's huge really, because almost the grip you had before is great for chipping and putting maybe, where you don't need the wrists so much, but as soon as you need to put the wrists in for that extra lever, if you don't get it in there, you're in trouble. And it's right underneath the meaty part of the hand. This is the key thing, the fleshy part, the heel pad here, I can actually hold the golf club now with one finger because it's resting underneath that heel part. This is a great thing that you can do to check. So place it on in that place there. You can even draw a line on like I have. Close the hand around the club. Take my setup. We're not going to really focus too much on the right hand, but now I'm in a good place with the grip. Now it's going to enable me to produce not only a square face, but also a powerful yep. uh, shot with some speed as well. Yeah, we wanted, to, we wanted to go on the lead hand only at this stage here. Of course, the right hand has an influence as well, but you get the lead hand good. It's amazing how well the right hand just fits into place. So notice from the front on view here, I'll create that set in the wrists, and that's where a lot of the power comes from. Taste it. That's close. That's got to be close as well, Pierce. I've got, oh, it's going to be a little left, this one. A little bit left, a little bit big again. So for the third tip, all you need is an alignment stick and you're just gonna thread it through your belt loops. And this is really gonna help us understand where these hips are in the, in the setup because where they, where they are in the setup massively influences how we move. And I would say one of the most common things that we see on the lesson tee, Pierce, when golfers come and see us, and it's amazing how many people do this. They set up to the golf ball and their right hip or their trail hip will be back and it will be high. Yeah. So you can see from this point here, I've got this side higher than this side. The problem is from this, it leads to more of what we call a sway, but also when we get an excessive high right hip, it's very easy to get in this reverse spine angle from here, which causes then more of an over the top move on the way down, a lot of steepness, a lot of interaction with the ground that we don't want, and potentially a lot of miss hits as well. A big knock on of effects that happen in the golf swing as a result of a poor setup, and it's not great for your back either. Definitely, definitely from, from being here, it can you know, definitely cause, cause a lot of back pain. So where do we want to be? Well, look, the great thing about this is thread it through your belt loops, maybe get yourself in a mirror or even at home in some of the patio windows and take your setup here or even just film it. And what we want to really feel is if you are somebody who's here, then all we actually want to do is we're going to nudge the hips forward slightly towards the target, and you'll see now that the trail hip is potentially a little lower than the, than the lead hip. What this does, the more my hips are over this way, the more it's going to encourage a better rotation of the hips on the way back. But look at the back now, the spine angle is great. It's leaning away from the target. It's a lot safer. And from here now, it will encourage a delivery, which is more from the inside, instead of this sort of blocked off feeling and, and more steep. You've got, you know, if you can get into a good place at the top of the backswing, you've got the option how you want to bring the club massive. down. If you get into that bad place, you haven't really got much of an option. It's massive. So do that, get an alignment stick, check it out, work at it, get yourself either filmed or in the mirror, and then just get the feeling of that. Like I say, get away from this right high hip, get them forward, make sure the right feels a little lower, and then you'll feel that you have some room on the way back. Look at all this room now for the for the hips to turn. So much easier to deliver, deliver yeah. the club in a more consistent way. And you're gonna to have to exaggerate this to start with as well. This is not going to feel easy for you. You're gonna to have to push it a little bit more than you think. So the, the feedback from the mirror and then the video afterwards is really important. Well, a bit one right, both long. The, yep. the, the breeze is picking up. This one's going closer. You're gonna take a little bit off this one, yeah? Oh, yeah, a little, a little smoother one. Okay, so again, knock those hips forward there. You can see the spine's good. Good. See the hips are good. See a lot more of that left pocket now. And a good rotation. We may have taken a bit off that one. Oh, no, I think it's still a bit long. It's still it? a bit long. Pumped today. I'm very pumped today. <laughs> Must be this amazing setup that you have, Andy. 
All right, so look, as golf coaches, we know how important it is for you to structure your practice to get the most out of your golf. So why don't you head to meandmygolf.com where we have how to play the basics, a complete plan which is going to allow you to know exactly what to do on a weekly basis. There's loads of other plans there as well, Break 100. Plus, we have complete putting, which is our brand new coaching plan coming out very soon. So all you need to do is click the link down there and we'll see you over there. Take advantage of that free experience. Thanks for watching.